What's up guys, this is the Rifeman and I'm back bringing you the next episode of my Empire Total War Let's Play as France. Um, so to round off happened last time, we su successfully managed to secure Jerusalem and now we're just getting into the phases of tearing down their buildings to replace them with proper Catholic French buildings. Um, so I will point out that I got about 10 minutes into recording this part, air quotes, um, previously, and then my game crashed in the middle of a battle. So what I've done is I've moved my forces from the Windward Islands, backed up with artillery from Jamaica, and I have landed in Dutch Guiana. So what happened last time was these forces all converged on me to fight a pitched battle. So I'll be interested to see what happens then. I'm only, fortunately I only have this because it was an autosave, because this is my end turn phase, because I wanted to attack the city, and they've knocked me out. So I think, if things go how they did previously, then uh, the result will be an immediate pitched battle against the Mughal Empire. And there's all my rakes going on their long walk. I sent them round to the Middle East. Um, I was going to use a ship, but then I figured that I didn't know if I could really be bothered to um, do that. And ultimately, rakes for me are very tricky. Well, not tricky. I just I don't I just don't find them particularly useful. I will sometimes use them to um, assassinate uh, enemy religious religious agents. So if they're spreading you know religion I don't like in my region, I'll use them to assassinate them. Maybe to assassinate gentlemen if they're annoying me by trying to steal my tech all the time. Um, and also, well, that's probably about it. I don't really use them to sabotage buildings. Um, mainly because I don't really think the AI experiences economic warfare the same way that a human player would so I kind of think it feels like it's a bit of a waste of time um, you could maybe send them you know send them uh, back to you know destroy religious buildings in certain areas there we go and yes yeah, so I never really use rakes I don't use them to scout I normally send I can just send a unit close enough to see what's inside a settlement before running away but anyway, let's get to it, because by the looks of it, well, well, this is the battle. So this is the battle that made me crash previously, so let's get at it. Straight at me. And then I've also got a... the garrison force coming from my left flank. So these are things to, to bear in mind. And I've got a bit of slightly cheating, because I know sort of what the AI is going to do. It's not really a cheese battle, but what I am going to do is deploy over in this sort of area because Native Americans may or may not be very frustrating in, in forests. So I'm facing that way. I used to cover one area, my militia probably deploy over here. Well, they probably will just deploy here-ish. This unit fashion line infantry has pikes, they can be reinforcements. Uh, cavalry on the left. Ooh, that's funny. Good. So I've got one spare artillery piece. By the looks of it, that weird deployment thing seems like it's just been me. It's just me being stupid. Cool. I'm gonna keep because this isn't a minute important battle. I'm gonna keep these guys firing a round shot to build up their um, experience. And these guys need to halt because they will pivot to fire at those guys and they'll damage themselves and fire through their own troops. So everyone's going to open fire onto this first unit of foot artillery. So let's see what the opening volley does. Killed one chap and got some kills on the, the levy behind. Some dervishes and my canister shot is going to have a bit of a workout. So yeah, this is where the reinforcing army comes from. 
And as they're garrison forces, they'll have lots of Native Americans who'll use like, their... Uh, knocked out a trail team. Who and a lot of their... Seek warriors, melee only troops. I was gonna say some. That's what it is. The uh, AI has lost a uh, horseman, bugged him with the general. See, they are knocking down their capacity to wage war. Ultimately, though, I don't need to give them too many broadsides before then I will spread my pikes out a bit more. Let's get a couple more volleys onto their artillery battery. Here the shells come. Taking out one of their guns, which is a good thing. But before I get too crazy, let's keep my howitzer aiming at their artillery. Let's get these guys to fire canister and blast that bowman. You start blasting the unit of Sikh warriors. There you go. Open fire already wavering due to the artillery. And already routing. You go and I'll have this artillery pound that Bowman unit into extinction and also spread my militia out. Good. Canister shot, hit the levee. Canister shot. Aim at the Bowman, I suppose. Pikes involved because they are going to charge my guns. Charge on through into the Sikh warriors. Get back to manning your guns. Same with you. Wherever your guns may be. Straight onto that unit of dervishes. God, these pikes are cheering them up. Mm, get back then, I suppose. Hit more of my cavalry into the levee. Oh. Who's that? It's the horsemen. I may as well. Move up. Charge into the levee. the mix, I suppose. Let's see how good pikes are against elephants. 
see the cavalry coming in on the flank, but again, pikes. Super good. Fall back. Let's deploy these guys over here to help shore up this flank. Maybe let's make you guys not charge the elephants. Make you guys come out. Pike should, you think, go on an absolute tear. Maybe charge into them, they're just bows them with their cavalry to keep them pinned. They'll be back. Have the howitzer picket some unit far away. Winning decisively. I suppose they are elephants. This is the benefit of having infantry with bayonets. my general out to go hit some of these retreating dervishes oh no not my general sorry I'll just keep them going actually they're doing a good job this is they're winning decisively but they're gonna run out of men or lose their general before I do I think General. May as well try to kill their general unit. Got him. Straight into the NATO bows. Barricade. Um, let's quickly continue. Mainly because... So what's running over there? Yeah, go for the native bows. Let's halt all artillery and speed up time. So then you also chase after these these uh, Bowman Auxiliary. This bit I was a bit of a car crash really on my part. I'm committed to the uh, 
to melees a bit too soon, didn't focus fire their infantry on the way in, so they got into range of my guns. Mm, close victory, well I wouldn't say it was close. We live and learn. Yeah, I lost way too many men there than I should have done. But now, against an army which relies on numerical superiority, I now have that numerical superiority. I could probably do with also. There is unused land suitable for farming. Yep, you want farms? You can have them. So let's go down to Jamaica. Crew some line. Move in, take the territory. Can't recruit anything because it's broken. So what's here? Lots of just levy and junk infantry. These guys are pretty much shattered. Okay, so let's spend some money on... Okay, very poor. So what I want to do is to build forts, in a wall around Albany and a wall around... I can't build a wall around here. Um, but I need to be careful and picky with my um, investment. Jerusalem, build a barracks, build the walls, build a conservatorium, build a cannon foundry. If this is going to be my springboard... Oh, I don't want to... Okay, let's build a trading port. Let's get... Uh, Jerusalem building again. And it's probably just exempt them from tax. They're making me no money, so I may as well keep them exempt from tax to let them grow. Good, the general's doing well. Because I want to keep an amount of... Oh, do I need to keep any money? I've got lots of money there. Well, firstly, how good is cotton doing? Very good. It's the most valuable resource. Yeah, even more so than spices. Well, let's get you going to get just a shade more cotton into the uh, industry into the uh, uh, into the uh, economy okay I think that's it but what I also want to do is I oh, see so you're coming down here to form another army down to send to the Middle East you guys replenish and then I want to send a bunch of these guys back to also go down to the Middle East Ah yes, and I also need to send an, a unit, a junk unit. Probably you, actually. Go secure Nice from the Portuguese. Good, good, good. And in this territory is a valuable territory. Lots of mining income. High yield gem mine, abundant yield gold mine, abundant yield sugar plantation. Low yield lumber mine, but does that really matter? But yes, these need replenishing. Some more forces need to be brought in. Good. Then my exit. Yeah. Then I'll start to push in, secure more of these territories in the Middle East, and then land an army down here in Ceylon to open up that route. Good, good, good. Lots of militia in Paris, just to make sure you know how the French can be. So let's do. War of the Ottomans, so don't worry about that. I'm a war of the Mughals, I'm a war of the Brits. Nope. Could give you Savoy, but I want to keep Savoy as a bit of a bulwark from any of these territories trying to wage war on me. They might try to push westward and take Turin, which with all this line infantry, I've got a pretty solid handle on it. Good, 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 right, hit and turn. See how people respond. Ha! <laughs> they can run around and try to disrupt my port building activity. It's a bit ironic, really, that uh, 
Yeah, I come in as the conquering invader. Grant, I slaughter the garrison. Um, but I invest in Jerusalem in a way that hasn't been done in their history. And I actually get them to, to be minorly economically successful. Louisiana just fancies wandering around the bayou, not necessarily being very helpful. Oh, good. No response from them on those islands. There is a port in this region that has not yet been developed. Select mm. the type of port to construct here. Fishing port will help your population grow. A trade try port get will into provide there. an income from overseas trade. A naval port. Okay, so Albany walls, a lot of money, but needs to be done. Ooh, and you don't have metal roads. Good, let's keep Boston growing. Portsmouth is poor for now. You're becoming Catholic, so you're getting rid of that religious unrest. Peasant farms, tenanted farms. So let's get my small Caribbean squadron. Oh, don't want to go too far. Go to here. Leapfrog your way forward. Don't like I don't like leaving ships like in the middle of the sea to let them get caught out. You're replenished as much as you can. So this little sneaky end around. Good. Get back in and replenish whatever troops you can for that amount of money. Just the general. Ironic. Oh, and I also need to buy a, a church school for this region and for Cairo. Because that would really help me out. In terms of um, budgets, I can move this colonial line to actually move, to actually take on a uh, actual combat position. Curry's making me a nice amount of money, 910. And Dana's about to be developed, so you will be a church school, as will this one. Come on, boot them out of there. Can't fix it, but Turin's a quite a relatively wealthy region. How's Paris doing? Paris is the one that has the potential to make a serious amount of amount of money. And you also need to look out at yeah these guys, Iron Masters Works. Lots and lots of money can be gained from there. Right, so you're on to Puddling Furnace, which I think I want. No, I think I want some more. Uh, well, no, to be honest, my economy, my tax base, I'd like to expand a lot more. Have I not built any water-powered cloth mills, which stops me from building that? There you are. Weaver's Cottage. Hmm. Right, end turn. Yep, so that's why I'll always need some sort of army in the United States because they will eventually move on to Boston that I'd like to fortify Quebec as well at the same time so because I know they'd like to uh, send ships around to attack that settlement to the rear and I don't really want to be pulling forces away from my front line
it's rather tempting to try to secure peace with Persia, because as I've been experiencing in my Russian campaign, trying to funnel through there can be quite an intensive job. Because then bottleneck and the Marathas and the Mughals, well, in this case it's the Mughals, last time it's the Marathas, they have nowhere else to send their effort. Whereas if I took Ceylon, I could then amphibiously assault islands all across their coast. Really spread them out. Ah, oh, the swines. Oh, Jinnah, where are you going? Because Jinnah is becoming quite a good little, powerful little faction. There is unused land suitable for plantations in this region. Building plantations so here. You and your sloop. Oh, oh, but if I want to. So if I want to break into the channel, I need a good navy. So I could build a dry dock to get me some second rates. See, they're building a naval hospital. I need to build some forts to expand my navy as it is, unless I request peace. Request peace. Request peace, and I'll <coughs> pay you a hundred. Peace and threaten. Fair enough. Looks like this Berlin force might instead. Well, I'll go down to Spain, ask for military access, and just go through and attack Lisbon and knock them out of the game. It's one way of getting out of. See, so, you know, it's got the North Atlantic coast. Well, the North African coast. Sorry, they have Corsica, and they also have um, obviously the territory in Italy. So, am I trading with Genoa? Yes, very friendly. I'm allied with Genoa. Good. Right, let's hit end turn. Really, because the situation in Europe at the minute is so stable I really need to be making those gains um, overseas so unfortunately Jerusalem is quite a quite a poor nation quite a poor region and I'm having to spend their only town in getting a church school I could wait Till the one in Egypt spawns a priest, but that could take too long. I'd rather just start cranking that handle earlier rather than later. There you go, they're sending more forces into the blockade. Yep. So that's going to hamper quite a lot or a significant portion of my trade income. There is unused land suitable for plantations in this region. Building plantations here will increase your nation's export capacity, improving income through international trade. So let's agree what? I guess I agreed you to a dry dock. There you go, Britain's already starting to churn out second rate ships. Let's take this. Berlin army. And this, ooh, I could create some cool infantry. Let's create four units of that for now. And then let's get you down to the Spanish border. Let's get the Sepoy unit over to Berlin as well. Okay, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this... Well, I'll do a bit more replenishment of this army. Then hit end turn again. Sort of burning through the turns here, but... With Portugal blockading my port, there's not a lot I can do. Because if I would send ships in to attack that... That um, Portuguese force... Then the British Royal Navy will attack me. And I could try seek peace with the British. I probably will, but I still need to expand my navy to knock out that little Portuguese force. Because I will attack Britain. I will declare war on Britain again. But trips, I don't think they would accept peace. I don't know. Maybe they might. Hmm. So I've taken lots of the territory in the in the uh, the Americas. Maybe if I gave them Jamaica, it's not earning very much, and it's just an island. Maybe if I gave them like the Windward Islands, no, not the Windward Islands, the Leeward Islands. The Windward are mine. And if I give them the Leeward Islands, they might accept that as a reusable offering. So I'll try to request peace as it is, because this turn my I should have three fourth rates. And they've got a fourth rate and a couple of brigs, so I'd seek to try and capture. Oh. They're coming to come play. There is a port in this region that has not yet been developed. Select the type of port to construct here. Okay, so diplomacy, major nations, Great Britain, minus 400, so I don't expect they will not buy it. Um, quest peace. They've gone for it. Can't trade with them, but that does not matter. What matters is that my fourth rates can go on and attack this fleet of oh, fifths and stuff. Auto resolve that. Good. Oh, and I captured the sloop. I would rather have captured the fifth, but. Say la vie. Good. Let's get these back out of the channel. Damaged flute, captured from the, uh, the uh, United Provinces. Got some thirds and second rates being built. Heavy frigates, brigs of war. Say, so let's upgrade this commercial basin as it is my home port. This will be done in three turns, so don't want to really build things that will be um, obsolete on the third turn. And let's go for some mild... No, let's go for this poor iron workshops to make me a lot of cash. Maybe more unhappy, but that's what happens. Yes, you are going Puddling Furnace. You'll get Wealth of Nations, which will make people unhappy again. Separation of Powers, which will make happiness again, but it'll make, again, earn me more tax, tax income. Brandenburg Garrison is underway. Probably want to crew. Okay, limited by Swiss Grenadiers. Limited by Swiss Line. Continue to skip well, one unit of Swiss Grenadiers and one unit of Swiss Lines. I want a reasonable garrison here. We have one unit of Grenadiers and a unit of howitzers to lob nasties over the wall. Good. Get this army on the way down here. Although, to be honest, if I did open. Can't request. Or do I have mid? Do I get military access anyway because we're allies? Yeah, then just walk right on through. Wicked. Right, 
you can't really do anything. The Moogles are about to move out to attack me, so I'm going to let them. Because once I break this army, then it's just this little knackered force that can stop me. The Marathas are laying siege to their port, which is good. Good, good, good. Things are in hand. Right, anyway, looking at the timer, I think that's the end of this part. So, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.